This is Keith Bradbury of Mojo Mouthpiece Work. This is a video about feeler gauges. We've talked about them before, but what I have to show you this time is a new set of feeler gauges that I've just started using that are different than my previous set. Uh, these have a very nice flat bottom on them. They're machined with a very sharp edge. In the past, probably for over over 10 years I've been using the more common shape which has a slightly rounded bottom and this may come in a couple variations some may be very rounded and you could hardly tell that there's an edge on it but these I can tell there's a slight edge which um, you need at least some edge so that one edge can rest against your mouthpiece that you're measuring and the other edge can um, go up against your glass gauge and you can you know see a distinct line on where to make your reading that's why these gauges here uh, are superior in my opinion to uh, the gauges I had been using because they're all flat flat bottomed and have a sharp edge a little too sharp perhaps uh, if your technique is a little uh, on the um, you know heavy side but I just uh, tested these on uh, four mouthpieces a brass mouthpiece um, and a uh, hard rubber a Delrin mouthpiece and a Dukoff uh, silverite which is a fairly that soft uh, pewter metal that uh, Dukov uses, which is uh, even even my old gauges occasionally would leave marks on that. So these, if you're a little heavy, uh, will uh, leave a little scratch in the um, side rails when you're using them. But I did did manage to reface all four of those mouthpieces without altering these uh, new feelers, and they worked fine. You just had to take either a final pass on the Dukov or uh, you know some kind of a mild polish pass. Um, I probably will lightly sand these edges. They're also a bit grabby as you're as as you're dropping them down even on hard rubber they'll they'll sometimes grab and hang up but um, as long as you wiggle them a little you know with some technique uh, you'll get a good reading. Um, my other video on um, feeler gauges is called measuring a facing curve and correcting a crooked tip. I made that about two or three years ago and I explained why I've chosen the spacing of the feeler gauges the way I have. And I contrast against uh, some classical sets that that um, you know are out there. So, um, so this this set was ordered with that spacing. What I want to show you now is uh, how to check out whether they're okay dimensionally. What I use, what I've used in the past is this digital micrometer. Now I, I've learned something just recently about this and I'm going to share that with you. The, the other gauge I use is this digital calipers and I've always thought that this was perhaps superior to use even though it says it has a precision of four digits here you know that's up to ten thousandths of an inch and that final digit does move by ones and there's even a half reading off to the side so there's a lot of precision in this gauge uh, ten times more than what's in my calipers this caliper has four digits but the last digit here only moves to the nearest five so it's uh... You know, I only get three digits of, you know, one to nine showing up, and this one is either zero or five. So there's an, but that's precision, not accuracy. Now, um, how do you check for accuracy? To do that, you need something called gauge blocks. And I managed to pick up a set of these, and I don't expect you to get them, but I'm just showing you what can be done. I got a set of these from a machine shop that um, didn't need them anymore. They had a new set or were selling them or whatever. And they come, these are certified um, thicknesses and it's not every thickness. This this set, the first set of blocks is, is 50 thousandths. 
it's 0.1 inches and 0 0.1001 so let me jump around so I'll show you that since they're a stand what you got to do is take whatever gauge you're using make sure you have it zeroed open it up take the gauge block this is 50 thousandths you need like three hands to do this but you get it in there run your gauge down and see what it measures so this is 50 thousandths measures another half you may want to move it around a little so that's not too bad on that one and you need to check your zero and my zero's off you know even it didn't a little speck of dirt or even uh, over time temperature of you holding these gauges can uh, change whatever reading you're going to get on them so check check your zero you can do this a few times using different thicknesses to gain some confidence in your gauge 502 now that's what I normally see this gauge I found out after running a number of different sizes tends to be uh, measure large by uh, by about point you know two two digits all the way to the right point zero 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 two see that's a one twenty gauge block and it reads too high and even though I go back and check the zero most of the times it zeroes out that times it's high open it up check it with a gauge block. So, yeah, that's small, but you need to be aware of, uh, to really do precise work, be aware of uh, the accuracy of your gauges, not just the precision. Now, my calipers, this is a 120, you measure in two spots, the flat surface, I get right on the money, 120, and also you can measure, how, and just in case you have some wear on your jaws, measure it right at the bottom and I can get 120, 19, 119, 1.5 and just how much thumb pressure you put on this can actually change the reading so we're really uh, measuring some very small things here but I have found out that this gauge even though it lacks the precision of my um, uh, micrometer is actually more accurate it tends to be more on size of the gauge blocks okay so, what I then do is I take each, each one of my new gauges and um, I have measured them in three spots. Since I, we're mostly worried about the, um, the bottom when you drop it into the, um, uh, between the mouthpiece and the glass gauge, it's the bottom edge that leans up against the mouthpiece and the glass gauge. So that's what you need to check. And what I do is I check it right in the middle where the numbers are with a, about half of the, um, you know, uh, flat end of the uh, micrometer rod on, on the gauge. So it's, and I, I measure that. And again, checking zero fairly often. Then I measure a little to the left, maybe by about a quarter of an inch. And then a little to the right. By again, by you know, whoops, I'll show you up. So I take those readings and I take those three readings and I average them, and I do that for all of these. And the reason I do that is to get you know, at least three readings of what I think the thickness is, and also the left and right readings in the middle gives you a little idea if there's any taper in the in, in the gauge. Now, another way to check taper would be to uh, drop it in on a sample mouthpiece, and if it's leaning one way, you can take it out and flip it around, and if it's tapered, it should lean the other way as you flip it around. If you get the same reading, you know, both ways, you can be pretty uh, confident that you have a, a straight gauge. So what I did, I, I set up a spreadsheet and this spreadsheet is shows the, each gauge, what they're labeled, my left, middle, and right readings that I got with the micrometer 
and then I average them. I, I, I look at a range, and then I subtract the, the average from what they're marked. And for these gauges, I got anywhere from 0 .001 high up to 0 .0005 high. And since my, my my micrometer reads a little high, you know, I could, you know, reasonably say that uh, these gauges are, are pretty good, you know. They're, they're pretty much what they are marked. Uh, my previous set varied maybe just slightly more than that. But, um, you know, I have confidence in my measurements after doing this type of uh, analysis. The way that I would um, sand the edge is just simply a piece of sandpaper. Go gently, kind of like at a 45 degree angle to the edge, a few strokes, flip it around. I would just do, I guess, the bottom. So, probably do it a little at a time and try them out on mouthpieces and see if I like the way the way they feel but these feel pretty good as they are so I mean I mess with it too much the last thing I want to show you is um, how I read my glass gauge um, the two kind of gauges I, I like uh, the best uh, there's one that it's no longer for sale it's by LAW law Lori a Waldron um, and the reason I like this is it has slightly tapered vertical lines. No other gauge has that. And the lines are very thin. Uh, Babbitt also makes a gauge where the lines are very thin, and it's, it's good. Most other gauges have, have lines that are about twice this thick, and it, they're usable. It's just once you get used to thin lines, I think it's hard to, hard to do anything else. Um, now... Now, I read my gauge to the nearest point one. And I'll show you how I do it. When you have, I'll blow this up. I'll take one division, and this whole division here is like one millimeter. And on your gauge, it might be marked from 40 to 42. Okay, so I've blown that way up. That would be just the distance between, you know, whoop, turn that around, two lines, here and here. Very small. So blowing that up. Now, I'll show you how most people, they can subdivide this somewhat. So if you get a reading with your feeler gauge in the middle, you know it's 41. You can subdivide again. You could probably pretty easily get 40.5 and 41.5. Okay? Um, most refacers stop like that. Some may go to a quarter or they may designate plus or minus if it's above or below that. Uh, since I type my numbers into a spreadsheet, I really want to get something that's not plus or minus. I want to get a number. The, um, the next set of anchor points that I use, so I actually visually look at it, what if it lies on, uh, I divide it by three with my eyes. I have pretty good eyes so I can do this. You know, If it's here or here, I round that off. This would be actually like, um, you know, 40.66. So I actually call that 40.7. Just round it. Then the other spot here, this would actually be 41.33. So I just 41.3. So that gives me two points out in the middle of nowhere. So I plus these other three. And then from that, that's all I do is with my thin lined uh, glass gauge, I know that if the, I, I've gotten down with the magnification and measured the thickness of the gauge as best I can tell, so the thickness of this line is about equal to point oh, uh, point 0.1 on the scale. So, if my feeler's gauge is just one line thickness up, I call that a 41.9. If it's two line thicknesses up, I call that a 41.8. Okay, so now you can see I'm, I'm kind of bridging the gap, uh, and likewise, 
um, I get used to judging that thickness, and I can see a 41.7 if it's three line thicknesses up. Now it's starting to get out in, in limbo here, but since you have an anchor point at 41.5, you kind of say, well, gee, it doesn't look like it's that, and hardly looks like it's this, it's in between, you kind of pick up 41.6. And that's the hardest area right there, is to get four divisions between your, your last anchor port point and your line. You do the same thing up top and you can pick up you know 40.1, 40.2, 40 40.3 and 40.4 and that takes you up to 40 and a half. Then it's a matter of going in between all the others. You can you know eventually uh, if you know where 5 is and 7 is you can figure out where 40.6 is. It's something in between it. Same thing down here 41.4. And if you know where 41 is and 41.3, you just have to pick up 41.1 and 41.2. Or if it's on the other side, you get uh, 40.9 and 40.8. So that's how I do it. You can come up with your own system. You don't need to go to the nearest point one. I could do fine work if I went to the nearest quarter or two-tenths. Um, but this is what I've gotten used to doing, and uh, uh, it works well for me.